Hey guys, welcome back to Vanguard Motor Sales. I'm Greg and man, I'm staying in front of one of my high school sweethearts right here. 1979 TA, four speed car, big block. You're gonna love checking this one out. So go to our website at vanguardmotorsales.com. We're gonna get it up on the lift so you can check out how nice the underside is. We're gonna take a look at that 6.6 .6 under the hood. We're gonna look at the interior. She's all original. You're gonna love her too. So go to our website and check her out. Now come on up and we'll fire it up. Look at this nose, beautiful. It's in great shape. The bird looks good, the paint looks great, the hood gaps are nice and straight. Chin spoiler looks good. The wheels are in awesome shape. They have that turbine look to them. Man, that is so cool. Or turbine, I always say the wrong word. We got great looking uh, gaps here on the doors. We got an edge protector here. Door jams look great. Spoiler on the back looks good. The plastic bumper on the back looks good. The keyhole's in here if I can figure out how to get it open. Inside the trunk there, we got some couple extra parts. The original uh, Space Saver spare there. These are the covers for the uh, T-tops. The paint on the bottom side of the deck lid looks good. Just a gorgeous car. We got a little ugly right there. It looks like handprints from me. Look down the side of it. Straight as an arrow. No dings, dents. Just a beautiful car here. Look at that door jam. And you can see it was rust protected originally. That's where they drill the holes there and they squirt that rust protection. But you can tell this car lived indoors its entire life. You don't have to worry about this car. Somebody took great care of this one. Now, at Vanguard Motor Sales, we own all of our inventory here. We spend the time to check it out before we buy it. Then when they come here to the shop, we inspect them so we can answer any question you have about the car. So call Tom at 248-974-9513 and he can tell you the whole story on this car. Now let's take a look at the interior. Look at that door panel, beautiful. The carpeting still looks great. Original carpeting in this car. It's got like shag carpet in it. It's so cool. 1979 right here. The seats are in beautiful shape. We got, of course, all the seat belts there look great. The back seat looks good. Package tray looks good. It looks like it had six by nine speakers added to it. Even the uh, dome light there is working. The dash pad's beautiful. The dash itself is gorgeous. I actually was just out driving this a few minutes ago, so I'm still a little bit excited. This thing was a blast to drive. And this is great for big guys, man. I had to scoot the seat up. I'm six foot tall. I couldn't reach the pedals when the seat was all the way back. Let's take our Trans Am for ride. Anniversary car here. Low mileage, only 54,000 miles on it. Actually, 53,806 right now. But it might get some miles on it because I tell you what, I'm having a blast driving this car. She handles great. Now, this is the car all the rich kids had when I was in high school. So, got kind of a special place in my heart for this one. These things were fast as heck back in the day. I tell you what, I remember them well. And it, having a four speed in it from the factory, that's really rare. I've actually heard some stories. The, one of the reasons that a lot of these uh, cars didn't have four speeds is they couldn't pass emissions. And then the government actually used to uh, find the uh, auto companies for even building these cars because of the emissions they put out on DXL on these big blocks. But this one's driving awesome, guys. 
Um, we're shipping experts. We can ship these cars anywhere in the world. So give us a call at 248-974-9513 and Tom can tell you just how easy it is to ship this car anywhere in the world. If you need help on financing, we can help you with that also. So just call Tom and he'll let you know exactly how easy it is. Now look down here on the dash. We got the, uh, the speedo working, the tack is working, the temp gauge, oil pressure. Looks like, uh, can't read that one. That's the fuel, the voltage. It's got an aftermarket radio in it. A lot of people did that back in the day. It's got tilt column. The four speed feels great in it. And she does have some get up and go. <laughs> Love the sound of those four barrels kicking open. So my dad used to talk about the hood sucking down. Of course, this has got a shaker on it, so it's gonna suck that shaker in that four barrel. Now we're right outside the Motor City, only 20 minutes from the airport. So if you wanna come visit, please come on out. We'll even come down to the airport and pick you up if you need to fly in or hop in your car. We're open six days a week. And don't forget, we buy high quality muscle cars and we take them in on trade too. Now here's our shop right here at 15100 Keel Street. We're actually getting a new roof put on today. Now you gotta stick around. We're gonna do something the other guys don't do right now. We're gonna put this up on the lift so you can see just how clean the bottom side is. And you know we're gonna pop the hood and see what's making all the power up front. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Greg is, unfortunately is out of the shop for today. So uh, you're gonna be stuck with me taking you through a tour of the underside of this 1979 TA. Uh, complete and total survivor. This thing has got pretty much GM stuff all over it. Most of this stuff has not been touched. Uh, as you can see here, everything looks to be original here as far as your shackles uh, go. All the shackle bushings look like they're actually, they've survived pretty well throughout the years. Uh, they're in good shape. I, I see no reason to uh, be concerned with any of that stuff. Looking here, brake lines look like they're factory original. We do have disc brakes in the back of this thing. Parking brake does indeed look like it's hooked up, but once again, this is a survivor car. Um, there's no surprise there. GM 10-bolt uh, rear end here. It's got a uh, 3.23 to 1 gear ratio in it. Uh, for 1979, that's actually uh, not a bad gear. Uh, right around this time, they were trying to get fuel economy. We didn't have overdrive at this time yet, so you were starting to see 271 gear ratios, 260, 250s, uh, some really scary gear ratios like that. This one is not. This is about a 323. Good enough where you can still get on the freeway with your four speed and not tax the motor too bad, but uh, you can still get some pretty decent gas mileage, and at this time period, they were concerned about that. The uh, exhaust does look like it's been freshened up with a little bit of paint. However, it does look to be relatively original, quite, at least quite possibly original. Um, and everything looks like, you know, a pretty nice job on it. Doesn't look like it's uh, compromised in any way, shape, or form. Um, U joints look like they're in good shape. Of course, we check all that stuff when we go through our cars. Floorboards look absolutely original and beautiful. Of course, there doesn't look like anything has really been done to them. They look GM correct. I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, looks like our fuel lines over here look like they're in excellent shape. Of course, being original, I mean, everything looks like it's just the way it was when it left the factory in 1970, probably 8, 79 early, possibly. Um, looks like the frame bushings are in really good shape. That's also something to check for on these. Cross members in excellent shape. Over here, these lines are in beautiful shape. Parking brake cable is there, looks good. Transmission. This is a four-speed Borgwarner T10. I think that is a relatively, if I'm not mistaken, a relatively rare option for this car. Um, and it is numbers matching for the car. Uh, the date on this, I believe, is like 1102, um, 1978 or something like that. So uh, it is, uh, the date code is actually correct and the VIN number matches like I just said. Uh, moving forward to that, we do have, uh, looks like the original type starter on it. We do have a Wix filter on this. I like to see that stuff. I really like Wix filters. Looks like uh, maybe has a new, uh, um, excuse me, what is this, uh, fuel pump. Couldn't think of the word. It does look like it has a relatively new fuel pump on it, or it could just be a really nice looking original one. Front end, of course, looks like it's in good shape. Most of it looks to honestly be original. Um, everything looks like it's greasable, so they must have just maintained it. Everything feels nice and tight on it. And of course, we always go through and check our front end, so I mean, you're gonna get that added bonus as well. Uh, big old Hank and Sway Bar here. It does look like the rear end, or the, uh, not, excuse me, not rear end, the uh, Sway Bar links have been uh, addressed at one point and replaced. Looks like we do have disc brakes in the front, and of course, we check all of our uh, brakes out, make sure that all the slides are free, so on and so forth. 
Um, from the underside here, the motor looks like it's got a pretty nice paint job on it. Looks pretty good. Uh, looking at the front of the car, all this is just as GM would have left it. Looks like it's in really good shape. I don't see any cracks or anything like that. And in fact, I see a lot of part numbers still on a lot of this stuff. I can even see like the marker writing up inside here as they were pulling this stuff off the, off the racks to put it on all these cars. So very, very cool. Um, this car truly is kind of a time capsule, to be honest. Let's check out wheels and tires. All right, guys, for wheels and tires, we have 255 60 R15 uh, Goodyear Eagle GTs. Uh, for the wheels, uh, looks like completely stock wheels. It looks like it has the stock lug nuts on it. Um, and uh, as you can see under here, I mean, it looks completely and totally factory paint. All the pinstriping, uh, the factory pinstriping, I should say, looks like it's all there. It doesn't even look like there's really any road rash or rocks that have been thrown up on it. Really good shape. Let's go check out the rear. All right, guys, in the back, we again have a 255 60R15 on the same good looking wheel, all original. Um, same thing back here, you can look up in the wheel well here and you can see that it's pretty much all original paint and it just about looks like it's factory brand new. If I didn't mention it before when I was underneath, I'll mention it now. I spin this and both wheels go, this thing is a posi. So uh, they had performance in mind when they built this, of course it being a TA. And uh, speaking of it being a TA, let's look at the 6.6 under the hood. Okay guys, this is the big block Pontiac underneath the hood here. This is actually a Pontiac engine, not the Oldsmobile engine that uh, Pontiac sometimes would like to stick in some of their vehicles. Um, this is a 6.6 .6 liter, 400. I do believe it to be numbers matching. The VIN number right there matches the, uh, the VIN on the car. And uh, the, date, the date code actually implies that it's, everything is tight and right about this. Um, even the carburetor is correct. I ran all the numbers on the four barrel uh, Quadradec carburetor. It's Pontiac specific, it's manual transmission specific. It is um, 1979 specific, and it's a non-California carburetor, which is also a good thing, which means you get that little bit of boost because, uh, as you know, California was a little bit more strict on their emissions. Um, all being said, this is, uh, of course, 1979. This is in the thick of uh, when uh, the government started regulating uh, emissions and stuff like that. So you do have about 220 horsepower output on this motor, um, according to our, um, our uh, code down here on the block here, from what I can tell. Um, outside of all of that, it's all pretty much original. They, even a lot of the vacuum, or I should say uh, all of the uh, emission stuff looks to all still be on this car. A lot of the time that stuff went the way of the Dodo and um, it's all still here. Uh, I don't see any uh, evidence of dry rotting on anything here. You can see we've got uh, good looking belts here. All the tension feels pretty good on them. Looks like uh, factory hoses down here. All of it feels like it's in pretty good shape. Uh, same thing with their upper radiator hose. Uh, booster and master cylinder look like they're still in pretty good shape. Of course, uh, it being surviving as well as it did. I mean, you saw the underside of this car. Uh, the engine bay looks every bit as original, even back down in here where you really can't see. Uh, all of like your vacuum canisters, it's all still there. The coolant reservoir is still there. It doesn't look like there's any cracks or anything like that in it, especially all the plastic bits. All of it has survived to this, uh, this day and age, which is uh, pretty astounding. I'd have to say that this thing was kept in a probably uh, climate controlled garage for it to still be this good and especially that i would imagine this thing has never been driven on a rainy day either looking at the underside I and mean, you guys all saw it with me so um that all being said this thing truly is a kind of a time capsule for for 1979 this is exactly what you would have found maybe in 1980 that's about the kind of shape that it's in so that all being said if you'd like to have this pontiac parked in your driveway make sure to call tom at the number below and let vanguard motorcycles park this ta in your driveway